We're excited to have you here with us today. I know that it's taken a lot of dedication, commitment, and determination to get where you are today. Um, tell us a little bit about what motivates you and why you decided to become an educator. Uh, what motivates me most is giving children opportunities. Um, I didn't come from a very stable background initially, and it took my grandparents who helped raise me, but it also took the educators in my life that actually gave me that opportunity to overcome that unstable background. And so currently I teach at the high school that I went to, and I see so many kids that are in the exact same situation, and I know that the only true way they're going to overcome it is through education. And so um, that motivates me to give them my all so that they can be all that they can be. Okay, describe your most memorable teacher. You're saying that educators played an important part in your life mm -hmm. growing up and helped to motivate you. Describe your most memorable teacher. Well, it's funny because probably my most memorable teacher was never my teacher. Uh, it was this, uh, my elementary school principal. Um, and her name was Ella Carter, and she ran my elementary school, and it was just this bastion of learning. Um, you know, she encouraged us, she pushed us, uh, she loved us, she nurtured us, and it was funny, uh, my sixth grade English class was directly across from her office, and it would be nothing but a thing for her to walk out of her office and directly into our classroom, and she would teach and, and do an English lesson, and, uh, if she saw you in the hallway and you weren't speaking correctly, she'd pull you to the side. And it was those type of things that I remember the most about her, is that she loved us and she wanted to see all of us excel and, and uh, exceed. And so she certainly is my most memorable educator. That is awesome. It is those type teachers that make education memorable today. Um, What's the secret to student achievement? You've just described some of the things that made you uh, successful. Do you think those things still hold today, or is it something else that um, is a secret to student achievement? Well, I think, like you said, I don't think it's anything that has changed. Um, maybe it has gone through some different um, incarnations, but pretty much, number one, you have to know your content area. You can't stand up in front of a group of anybody be it children or adults, if, if you don't understand what it is that you're teaching. Um, but that's not even the majority of the battle. The biggest part is getting a student to believe that you care about them as more than just a test score, as more than just um, a student in your class. You care about them individually. You want to see them excel and exceed. And once a student has bought into the love that you have for them, then you can lead them to the moon. So is there one particular person that inspires you? No, I, I, it's just a conglomeration of people. My grandparents and, and their loving and nurturing environment. Um, all the teachers that, like I said, it was easy in the beginning to look at me and say, you know, this is a child that's at risk. This is somebody who maybe we shouldn't invest in. You know, I didn't have two stable parents. I, I was growing up with my grandparents, and probably I wasn't the most well-behaved child at some point, but teachers saw past all of that and took an interest in me, and so that motivates me to try and give back. Okay. Um, so having said that, there are teachers that you remember. What would you like to be most remembered for? I like to be remembered as that teacher that gave them something they didn't have. Um, I often talk about kids who you can just throw the book in the classroom and they're going to learn. You know, there's some kids, they have the home environment, they have the parental support, they have the innate intelligence, they have the motivation and drive. They're going to succeed regardless. But those are the very few kids. There are some kids that it takes that one person, that one teacher to look at them and say, you can be something, you're going to be something, and it can put them on a whole totally different trajectory for their life. And so if anything, I like to be that teacher, that teacher that has taken a child that was on uh, the road to destruction and put them on the road to success. That's wonderful. Uh, I've always, growing up, wanted to be a teacher. I played teacher uh, in elementary school. Any classmate that came over to visit, I would always be the teacher and they would be the students. Uh, have you always 
plan to be a teacher or somewhere something no, changed? No, no, no. Um, I did not want to be a teacher. In, in fact, it wasn't until I really almost became a teacher that I finally said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I had decided I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, I went to law school and I finished law school. And it was during a clerkship at the Fulton County District Attorney's Office that I saw so many young people being locked up. I saw so many young people's lives being negatively affected in the criminal justice system. And it really weighed on me because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a prosecutor. But seeing these kids and wondering where they had gone wrong, I didn't know if I really wanted to lock people up for the rest of my life. And so as I began to reflect and think about the opportunities that I had, what made me different from those people, it, it really became crystal clear that I kind of wanted to give something back and, and be a positive influence rather than that, that negative consequence that you see down the line. So, no, being a teacher was not something that I thought of, and, and most of my friends laugh when they hear that I'm a teacher now because um, they didn't think I had the patience or, or the, um, the drive to do it, but it's certainly something I love right now. Wow, were they wrong. <laughs> Um, what do you think is the most pressing issue facing public schools and public education today? The most pressing issue that we have right now is I think a leadership void. And I say that because we always hear the statistic or we always hear the anecdote that says the biggest impact upon student achievement is a good teacher. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. But I think the biggest thing that impacts the creation, the um, sustainability of good teachers is good leadership. And right now, unfortunately, I don't think we have a lot of good leadership in education. I think we're having a lot of teachers that are falling through the cracks because they're not being supported, they're not being motivated, they're not being grown. I think we have to look at teachers the same way we look at doctors, the same way we look at lawyers. You're consistently growing. You're consistently practicing education the same way they practice law and practice medicine. But in that practice, you have to have someone that is helping you become better. And I think a lot of our teachers are simply being drawn to the wolves and given these mandates of student achievement, but not given the support, that, that individual support, that individual nurturing that's going to help them go to the next level and in turn take our students to the next level. Okay, now you understand there are a lot of barriers to um, uh, student achievement. Certainly. Uh, of course, you have the overcrowded classrooms, you have uh, even transportation. When students are transported to school, the buses are overcrowded. A lot of them are standing on the buses. What do you uh, describe your ideal classroom. Um, well, first of all, you know, overcrowding is certainly an issue. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, I think that's part of the problem. You know, leadership has begun to say, you know, we're going to put 30, 45 kids in a classroom and, and you're going to teach them. Number one, I think you have to have an optimal student to teacher ratio. Um, off the top of my head, do I know what that optimal ratio is? No. But certainly I think as we approach the 30 and 40 students in the classroom, I think we are going above and beyond what that optimal ratio is. Um, number one, so once you get that correct student to teacher ratio, I think that's the first step. Number two, technology. Um, you know, I've gone around the state and people say, well, it's not the stuff that you have in the room. And I, and I can agree with that. You know, a good teacher can teach. But as we move into the 21st century and beyond, our students have to be proficient in the use of technology. Uh, this is in 1978, 88, it's not even 98. This is 2011 going into 12. Our children need to know how to use iPods, iPads, um, advanced technology, understand the virtual reality and those type of things. And the only way they're going to get that is if we integrate it into the public school system. But if we're consistently in a mode saying, well, those are extra things, that's a problem. Um, technology is not something extra. It has to be part of the essential process. So once you get the student to teach you, uh, student to teacher ratio, uh, the proper technology and facilities, then again, you need to have a, definitely a good teacher in that classroom. Um, once you have that, I think you begin to to see what my dream classroom is like. Okay, if you could tell your colleagues across the state after having um, toured the state of Georgia, after having visited different classrooms talk to different educators, leaders, principals, superintendents, and so forth, and even board members. 
Uh, if you could tell them one thing, what would that be? That you're doing a good job. I want teachers to know that despite what the media puts out, despite uh, the fact that we're often beat up, we're doing a great job. More children are graduating high school than ever before. Now, the second part of that is, are we where we want to be? No, but I think the teachers throughout this state are motivated. They want to see their students achieve. And once the system begins to put things in place, then we're going to see that student achievement. But I don't think the teachers are bad. I don't think the teachers are the problem. The teachers are the shining stars, and they're the ones that are pushing this educational drive forward and upward. I agree with you totally. That is the one thing that our teachers need to know, that they are doing a great job. I agree. Um, why do you think you were selected as Teacher of the Year? I can see why you were selected, but why do you think you were selected? You know, I often um, ask that question in the morning when I say my prayers. Um, I just, I, you know, I guess to say that I'm blessed. Um, because I know that this state is filled with thousands of excellent teachers. And for me to have been selected um, simply was an act of God because any number of them would have been an excellent representative for the greatness we have in our educational facilities. So um, I'm blessed and I, I serve as a representative of all the teachers that help push me forward. Great. That is, that, I, that is so true. What do you think? What would you say or what would you do to, to make the profession of teaching more attractive? Well, first of all, we have to make it a profession. Um, you know, I look at it and, like I say, I put teachers right on par with doctors and lawyers. I, don't, I think, in fact, I put teachers above doctors and lawyers because without them you can have no doctors and lawyers. But when we talk about a profession, are we treating our teachers as true professionals or are we treating them as unfortunately some type of line workers where you have a product that you're putting out. That's not what we do. We don't create widgets. Uh, we don't fix widgets. We create lifetimes and we help realize and fulfill dreams. And so recognizing the pivotal role that our teachers have, we need to uplift them. Um, you can't consistently beat teachers up and, and put them down and expect them to excel and succeed. We have to begin to treat our teachers like superstars and, and uplift them and motivate them and say to them, you're doing a great job, here's where you can improve. Instead of saying, you know, this is where you're dropping the ball, these are the things you aren't doing, meet this test score, uh, meet this mandate. We have to start that process before we can draw in the best and the brightest to be teachers. I think you're absolutely right. We're so happy that you are a GAE member, so tell us why you decided to become a GAE member. Oh, GAE has, has, a, has had a long uh, long storied history of standing up for the rights of teachers and so um, I knew if I wanted someone to have my back I could um, definitely find that with the GAE and uh, the impact they have through the National Education Association and, and being able to spread around the country um, is just phenomenal and I'm proud to be a part of it. Well thank you so much and we're proud to have you as Georgia State Teacher of the Year and a member of the Georgia Association of Educators. Thank you so much. Well, thank you.